How many ready for the word today? Bless God. I am 80 years old. I, there's an internal battle that goes on. That is that my heart says I'm 40. My flesh does not agree. But we're talking to it and uh, convincing it that it's just getting started, so you better get your motor running, baby. Y'all look Hey, man, bless God, you're as old as you think you are, and I think I'm 40. Uh, sometimes running up the stairs, my body doesn't agree, but. Anyway, uh, I've got a, an interesting sermon today. Um, how many have ever heard of Will Rogers? Anybody ever heard of Will Rogers? A lot of people tried to forget him. Uh, but he was a commentator of the 40s. And uh, some of the things that he said I thought were pretty interesting, so I thought maybe I'd read a little bit of it. The reason for him reading it is um, he was one of the commentators of the day that brought a lot of common sense to the surface of the times. The times were Roosevelt and some of the social education and social post office and social security. And, and uh, he, I had a great un, greater understanding than most of what was going on. And so he wrote things like, I don't make jokes. I just look at the government and report the facts. I thought that was really good. Now, this one is his. I didn't, I didn't write this one. I didn't write any of them, but Democrats are the only reason to vote Republican. <laughs> I didn't write it. I'm not taking sides here. I'm just reporting something that I... You can find this on Google, so... Three kinds of men, one that learns by reading, one that learns by observation, and one that learns by grabbing an electric fence. <laughs> uh, there are those that are running the government that probably shouldn't play with matches. I thought he had a, quite a sense of humor. He said there was a lion that ate an entire bull and then began to roar like a lion and a hunter heard him and shot and killed him. The moral of the story is if you're full of bull, don't open your mouth. <laughs> I thought that was rather good. Uh, I like the one, maybe I'll just do one more. There's so many, I'll probably work on something into next week. Our politicians are some of the best money can buy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to talk about this is something that God gave me just out of the blue last week. And, I, and I've been skirting and teaching all the way around this for months. And um, so it's been really pretty strong revelation for myself. Uh, concerning common sense. I started a book uh, a number of months ago on common sense. And you know, I was working on a book on truth and how they're kind of coming together into one book. But this new revelation that he just spoke to me again on Monday. And he said, when common sense is gone, what's left? And I said, nonsense. Or no sense. So the attack so much seems to be on eliminating critical thinking or what is, should be known as common sense. Common sense tells you obviously what is sensible and what is not sensible. But we see a lot of nonsense in the world today. 
And the reason that we see nonsense is because we haven't developed what God gave to us right in the very foundation of time, which was common sense. When he breathed the breath of life, you've heard me teach it, so you know the breath of life is about order, keeping things in, in your life in order. Well, you can abuse that by disorder in your life. I have a drawer that's totally in disorder, and sometimes my closet is, and sometimes I have clothes on the floor, and it tells me that I'm maybe a little bit neurotic, but I'm not psychotic. Y'all okay? Perfectionists tend to be psychotic, and they're just, everything has to be in order. If it's not in order, then you live under extreme stress. Hello? One thing's out of order, something evil's going to happen. Oh, my God. Well, that, that is pretty close to mental illness. That got awful quiet. So it's also about reason, being reasonable in life. And I think about all the things that have happened in the body of Christ just in the last 50 years that I've been born again. And I've watched all the legalism and can't have long hair and can't wear women with pants. And, and all of those things are nonsense. Hello? It's just nonsense. It's just, it's just dumber than a post. It doesn't make any sense at all. To come up with all, because that's what Christians are supposed to be. That's not the, what God did. That wasn't part of God's plan. Nonsense. We have so much nonsense going on in the world today. It doesn't make sense to sow a seed, make a baby, and then destroy it. That's a nonsense. It's just, it's not sensical. Good sense is don't allow the seed. That's where choice lives. It also is just as responsible as the man. Don't sow the seed. You don't want the harvest. Now that's truth and common sense. You see how non-common it is. And we see the craziest stuff. Now we're going to change genders of five-year-olds? Is that sense? Is there any sense in it at all? Well, how did we get to this point? We got to this point because they have destroyed in your ability of common sense. And we left the Bible that is filled with common sense. The Ten Commandments are common sense. They're not like so tough. Like, don't murder? Oh, that's really tough. Don't steal? Don't commit adultery? Oh, man, that might be common sense. Having one God makes common sense. Having a hundred makes no sense at all. Or making something else your God. There's no common sense. Honor your mother and father. Oh, what an idea. Common sense. So, well, they don't deserve honor. God didn't say that. They gave you life. I said they gave you life. That's, it's tough on people, I know, but the, these commandments were just common sense. Nothing so difficult. Just as he breathed of life, he breathed order, he breathed reason, he breathed love, he breathed intelligence, the ability to learn, to be sensible, to be orderly, to be loving, to be intelligent. Wow, this is really deep. But they're all common sense. Revelation from God's Word is common sense. I, I wasn't going to go there, but I'm so at the turn of the century, we have somebody called 
Dewey and some of these crazy people that attack all of education, but also the idea of creation. We've got people that are out trying to teach creation. When I first got born again, I struggled with the first six chapters of Genesis until I did a full study of it and began to understand what God was saying and how God created. Creation is the only sensible solution. I was talking to Logan on yesterday when breakfast with one of my grandsons. And he said they, they teach stuff like a meteor landed in a lake and had water in it. And it supposedly produced amoebas that eventually walked on land and flew. That is absolutely nonsense. It, you're not explaining where the earth came from. You're not explaining where the meteor came from. You're not explaining where water came from. God created out of hydrogen and oxygen. The first and the eighth atomic number. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, water, water, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. And made H2O. Now we want water. Now that makes sense. Science has spent the last hundred years disproving their own foolishness. When they began to explain the, the idea of frequency and the idea of quantum theory and the idea of atomic structure and atomic... They've explained how God created, and God said, let there be sound and light. Amen. Creation is common sense. But look what they have done to our young people and to adults that somehow believe all this absolutely ignorant stuff. And it is taught it to get you away from common sense. Just gets you to believe a lie. And slowly break down whether you believe the Bible or not. Could it be true? That's why I did this study that I did, because I'd been so indoctrinated by the world that I had to prove the Bible to be true. And scientists are all over the world are finally going, oh, you know what? The Bible's true. This is fascinating to me, but of course we don't hear that on the news much. I mean, just in the, the first line of the Bible, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Oh, science says time, space, and matter. Aren't they brilliant? <laughs> I, 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 anyway, okay, I want, I want to get to this because this is what happens to the soul because the only thing we deal with in the Bible that deals with is the soul. We know we get born again. The Spirit's all brand new. We know the flesh is made out of dirt and that it only responds to the power of the Spirit working through the soul. So we, we understand that. But the soul, if they can mess up the soul, if they can mess up your belief system, you will no longer trust the truth. And how does that happen? By eliminating common sense. See, I'm going to get to this next week on the five dimensions of the soul. I, I don't have time to get into it today, but just laid the foundation today. Uh, the senses are seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, and smelling. When you leave common sense, you actually enter into perversion of the senses. Because common sense is the only boundary that we have See, if you don't train boundaries into your children, they'll never have any common sense in life. So why has there been this massive move? We had even a couple in our church that was so glad that they left. They were teaching this liberal mentality of raising children. We've got to let them be creative.
Don't, don't give them boundaries. Just let them become expressive. Well, those people right now are walking into stores and just take what they want and walk out. No common sense. Like you're supposed to pay for that. Is anybody... You see, when you, when you leave common sense, you left boundaries for your senses. And when you leave boundaries for your senses, you become alcoholics. You become anything that can happen to the flesh that becomes destructive. The boundaries were set there so that you could have life and life more abundant. They weren't laws. They were principles of life. But if you don't teach the boundaries of good and evil, then you'll find your kids go down the road of evil. The breakdown in morality because they haven't been taught what is right and what is wrong. That's what train up a child means, to train them up in the ways of the Lord and then they won't depart from it. I'm so thankful that God allowed my wonderful wife, who was the best mother that I could imagine, she trained him up with such character and such, in the, in the love of God. And, and as a result, I have amazing sons. I don't take much credit for it. I provided at least. But she trained them with so much order and discipline. I, I mean, I disciplined them. Yeah, I did. Hurt my heart to do it, but you have to teach them right from wrong. And once it's settled that when you do wrong, this hurts, and when you do good, this is blessed. Is that too deep? Now, I know that it could hurt just the emotions and you don't have to beat a child. That's not what the Bible actually means, although the translation seems to say that. That wasn't what God meant. How does God discipline us today? How does God discipline us today? Make you sick, put you in a hospital, kill you? No. Every time I get going in a wrong direction, something happens right here. And peace lifts. And I'm going, uh oh, mm -mm, I'm not going that way. I'm going to turn right around and go this way. And then it lifts. That's how he guides us. That's how he disciplines us. So it isn't about hurt, but it's about changing the heart. Somebody get it. Not about changing the head. It's about changing the heart. Because you capture the heart, you can keep your child on track. I wasn't going to get into that. So any time that you leave the boundaries and you don't teach the boundaries, or we don't live our lives by these boundaries, by keeping our lives in order, keeping your marriage in order, keep your job in order, keep your business in order, keep your church in order. Come on, somebody. When it's reasonable. But look what religion did. It was unreasonable. Just in the last 50 years that I've been a Christian, they were throwing up in buckets to get deliverance. I can't find that in the Bible. There was angels in the attic. No, the angels are right here, right in the church. They don't hang out in the attic. They walk with us. Come on, they help protect us. Amen. And the fallen angels, they're trying to trip us up. Come on. We call them devils or demons or whatever you want to call them, but they're fallen angels. And we had gold teeth. Oh, the gold dust fell, fell in praise and worship, the gold dust. Did you sweep it up and sell it, or what would you do? Oh, I got a gold tooth. Got a gold tooth. Why, why would God give you a gold tooth? If a gold tooth was what God planned, then he would have gave... Everybody gold teeth when you got born. Now, if you prayed for God to fix your tooth, he'd give you another tooth. 
I mean, this is really deep. But look at how this simply and easily the body of Christ is followed stupid. Why? No common sense. Keeping it in order. See, when there's no common sense... I haven't got started yet, so this is going to go into. When we haven't got common sense, then even in the areas of emotion, we get messed up. Oppression, depression. I believe even illness and sickness, psychosomatic stuff that happens in our lives because we've left order. We've left reason reasonable. It's not reasonable to cut off body parts. It's absolute disorder. So you look around the world, you have disorder all over the world. Just the opposite of order because we left common sense. See, the Holy Spirit's responsibility for us as Christians that the Holy Spirit is designed to lead us to all truth. And all truth is the Ten Commandments and common sense. He'll lead you to put things in order. I cleaned up yesterday kitchen and polished the counters and washed the dishes. And I went up and took a nap and Came back down, and Maureen is doing it again. She said, I said, what are you doing? I cleaned it all up. She said, I'm now cleaning like a woman. Not like a... Something was out of order, and she was putting it in order. Well, you don't do the cracks, and you don't... What? Well, it looks good. <laughs> so the more order we put in our life, the better life gets. Because the Holy Spirit will lead you to order if you listen. He'll actually lead you to reason and being reasonable. Church services should be in order. Your church should be reasonable. Should be intelligent. Should be filled with love. She's filled with revelation from God's Word. Just like our lives. Just like our marriages. Just like we train our children up in common sense. I'll take you to the five dimensions of the soul next week and how common sense is what the Holy Spirit leads us to because, you see, the Holy Spirit knows how to get us to the best life possible but we have to listen. You can always override the Holy Spirit. Did anybody know that? But the Holy Spirit leads us to truth, and truth is the Ten Commandments. Truth is common sense. Truth is the Word of God. Truth is His house. Truth is where faith grows. Truth is the church is the primary receptive energy to receive every good thing from God. Doesn't mean you can't receive someplace else. But the gathering of the church, look at people that think their church is in Uganda. That's dumber than the post. You can't go to gather in Uganda. You guys got deathly quiet. You find the church that you can go to where you can gather, you can be part of, and get, as Dr. Marine just talked about, get your roots down so that when storms come, you grow in faith and you grow in love 
and you grow in the goodness of God and you grow in order and you grow in reason. Remember, only rats bail out of a ship in a storm. Metal Lark Lemon taught me that. Hmm? Got quiet again. Father God, I give you praise and I give you glory. Let truth be settled in the hearts of those things that are not true be washed away in the precious blood of Jesus. We see what's going on in the world, but I know, Lord God, you have a plan to put it all back in order. You have a plan, and it's come, and just like the word you said, it's going to be the happiest of New Year's coming. And we get excited about it. We're excited, Lord, that you're going to put your church, your house, your country in order. And we give you praise and glory for it. You've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior right now. I want you to receive him right now. God wishes that none should perish, but all should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Repeat this prayer after me. You can receive Christ right now. Change your whole life. I prayed this prayer at 27 years old. Changed my entire life, and I never became religious. I never became religious, but I do try to live my life by the truth. Receive Jesus. Just pray this prayer with me and watch and see what God, if you're in your house and you haven't received Christ, receive him right now. God wishes that none should perish. Go save, come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.